Alright guys, so in this video we're taking a look at the uh, HGLRC Race Whoop. This is a uh, design from a guy named Freezillion, and he has his uh, designs up on Thingiverse. Uh, I believe there's a two and a half inch version of this. I'm not sure if HGLRC is going to make that or not. I know that that's, I think there's uh, that's possibly a remix of the original three inch design. Not 100% sure. There's a large community on Facebook that actually builds these and races these. Um, I don't really follow this stuff all that much because I'm not into whoop racing. But uh, the main um, the main feature of this particular design and model is the fact that it is um, built out of um, an indestructible, quote unquote, indestructible material called PCTPE, and I'll just put that up on the screen. What that is, it's a 3D printed filament here for these uh, prop guard ducts, and um, is basically this whole design is meant to be very durable and very crash resistant. Um, I did not do any crash testing. I don't typically do crash testing because, for the main reason being, crash testing is very subjective. And what I mean by that is every crash is different. Uh, the way I crash mine versus the way you crash yours might be totally different. I know people that have, you know, have like very light crashes on something that's supposedly very durable and and it broke. Whereas I've crashed very badly on something that's not very durable and nothing broke. So, uh, you know, it's um, that's the kind of the thing with crash testing is not something that you can set a standard to and repeat. Um, I suppose, you know, you could do a test where, okay, we'll just do the same exact same crash a hundred times to see how many times it can last before things start to break. But, you know, how reliable is that test? Not very reliable. Plus, there's a lot of shenanigans that go on in this um, FPV industry. I don't know if you guys remember that controversial um, quad that came out. Oh, actually, I'm not even going to name the I'm not even going to name the brand because I'm going to get in trouble with all the fanboys out there. But it was about two years ago, uh, they sent out a um, sort of quote-unquote in indestructible quad. And they, when they contacted me, they're like, oh, you know, if it breaks, don't show it on video. I'm like, but you said this is indestructible. So anyway, I never made a video on that because I was like, I'm not going to be involved in that kind of shenanigans. And that's the thing about, you know, YouTube videos is they can just show you what they want, they want you to see and hide all the stuff that is like bad. So that's why crash testing is kind of pointless on YouTube. But this is, I think, going to be fairly durable. Um, just because this material here is is well known to be very uh, crash resistant. I mean, it's not indestructible. It's probably close to as anything that could be indestructible in terms of things that are 3D printed. You know, it is somewhat flexible. See, I can flex it. So when you crash it, it will bend it and, and give a little bit. And it will break the props. Of course, um, it, hopefully it will save the motor. Uh, I think the area where things might break are these spokes here but you can see they have it's a well it's pretty well made in terms of they got, they got a, a little curved surface right here as you can see where my finger is right there but you can see it's a straight um, corner here so this could be curved as well that would actually um, improve the design in terms of its durability if they wanted to make this stronger but my thing my thinking is that it's probably going to break here even though there's quite a bit of material there or somewhere along this spot here so you know it's a trade-off right so you can make this even more durable by adding additional material and making it heavier uh, but at the expense of flight time and just <laughs> overall just you know being more heavy now they're using these um 20 yeah it's going to be hard to show this on camera these are 2105.5 motors with the uh, funky uh, one and a half millimeter shaft here with the uh, M5 uh, nut, and these are T-mounted props, uh, the D75 props, three-inch prop here. Um, yeah, this is the same prop, the same motor that's on the Recon Six that they're using in this one as well. Three thousand kV in this one, so this is a 4S version. There is a 6S version available as well. This is the analog version, and there is a DJI version available as well. So. I'll uh, link to all those down in the video description. Uh, as far as I know, this is pretty close to this um, the design that Freezillion put out. I don't think there's any major modifications. Now, the, the key thing to this whole design is the fact that 
this material is very uh, tough and durable and they have this sort of interlocking mechanism here uh, for the ducts to hold them together so they won't fall apart in a crash and then there's this large m3 screw that goes through the top carbon plate and the bottom carbon plate and both of the ducts to hold everything together and then there's a uh, press fit nut here in the bottom that goes to that m3 screw and there's four of them here so basically that's how the whole design is held together there's a 20 by 20 stack in here uh 28 amp bill heli s esc and a 20 by 20 f7 uh, flight controller and then they have the uh, zeus uh, nano 350 milli uh, milliwatts video transfer and analog video transfer here so this is not an all-in-one uh, flight controller board they're two separate boards for the flight controller and the ESC. I think that's going to be pretty much a uh, requirement for crashing because you know the thing about crashing is these ducks will take a hit. They'll basically seize the motor because the prop will probably get stuck and then the motor will send a large current uh, pulse into the ESC and, and usually an all-in-one ESC can't handle that much because the board's so densely packed. So separate ESC obviously here is a requirement for crashing and they've done that so it's good uh the getting inside here is next to impossible you have to take the whole thing apart basically just as i said those four screws to get inside so unfortunately I can't show you any photos or anything what it looks like it is, you can just see how you know, there's some wires there there's a there's a capacitor in there they're using a xd60 for the battery i flew it around with a tattoo or line uh, 1300 uh, you could probably go to a bigger one uh, this little 3D print here for the camera, which is the Cadex Rattel, um, I think it's the V2, whatever the latest Cadex Rattel is. Now they are going to update this print because, for one, the camera angle is fixed, which is about a 45 degree angle. So if you want to use this as kind of a cinema, uh, you are going to have a hard time flying because it, the camera angle is fixed. They are going to replace this with an updated print here that will have an uh, the ability to adjust the camera angle. And then they're going to fix this problem with the GoPro mount part here. So that's why you know I don't have the GoPro mount on here because it basically when I uh, attach the GoPro on here, the print is got a flaw where it would pull through this little screw hole there, and it's, yeah, you're not going to see there. So what it is, I actually put a nylon uh, washer in there to give it a little bit more resistance to getting pulled through, but it still gets pulled through. So. Uh, that's why you're not going to see any GoPro footage on this one. Plus, you're flying a super fast and a crazy angle. And, uh, yeah, so I'm going to wait till later and uh, maybe uh, use the updated print. And hopefully they'll send it out to me at some point. But, yeah, there, you can put a GoPro on here, but it, I would wait for the updated print. Hopefully, ones that are shipping to customers will have the new print. If you, don't, if you get this um, older print, I would contact them and have them ship you out a replacement one. That's going to have the features I mentioned with the adjustable camera angle and the fix for the print getting pulled through on that screw hole. So, all right. So here is the weight, and this is very heavy. Uh, let's see if I can get this to show. It's about three hundred and thirty point six grams, so pretty heavy. And then with the thirteen hundred four S. Now we're coming in at uh, 477 grams, so quite a heavy uh, Cinewhoop. Now the other thing that uh, is worth noting is it's got big motors on here, so it's got plenty of power and you know you can race it around. Of course that's what this sort of intended for is racing and then of course you know uh, surviving crashes. So uh, this might, be not, might not be a bad uh, one for beginners, um, you know if you if you're someone that might be crashing a lot, maybe take a look at this. Obviously, don't uh, put a GoPro on here because that's going to probably get destroyed at some point. The other thing I'd be more worried about is the battery. The battery is on here on top. It's totally exposed. It's in this sort of uh, sideways configuration. I would um, recommend maybe getting some like um, some sort of like maybe hard plastic or some sort of 3D printer parts to shield the battery so it doesn't get dented um because if you crash really f hard and because it's exposed and you're going forward this this battery is totally exposed and you'll get dents um maybe things will puncture it um yeah i mean i, I think i saw, I saw someone i had uh, one of these before um it actually came out in this biden fly model 
they were racing it and the battery got punctured by something like a nail or something and it caught on fire so yeah so you know maybe some kind of metal or pla hard plastic cover put it on top of here when you strap down the battery just to give it a little bit extra protection so that it doesn't get punctured by something because then you get a nice nice battery fire from that so that's the that's the i think you know while the quad is nice and durable you're probably going to be uh, destroying a lot of batteries if you don't find some way to protect your batteries. So something to keep in mind about this model. Now the last thing to note about this thing is it's extremely, extremely loud. It's uh, the loudest quad I've ever flown in FPV, and that's um, over the last five years. And it's louder than any 5-inch, 6-inch, or 7-inch I've ever flown. If uh, you want to fly this at the middle of the night and wake up your entire neighborhood, you will succeed. It, you'll probably wake up every animal within a uh, 500 uh, meter radius of this thing. It is extremely loud. You can hear it from way far away. And if you want to go to the park and annoy people to death, uh, go and fly this around a bunch of people and then they will come screaming at you. This thing is the loudest thing I have ever heard in my life. This is extremely loud. In fact, I can't fly for very long because it gives me a headache because of the, something about the frequency of the noise that this makes it has a combination of this duct and this prop and the weight and everything. Uh, after about two minutes of flying this, I literally can't take it anymore and have to stop flying because it's uh, super, super um, annoying, especially whatever frequency this is um, emitting. This particular setup is just, is, is just horrible. So yeah, uh, something to me note to note if you like things that are quiet, uh, this ain't it. But if you like things that are extremely loud and noisy, and uh, it's going to attract lots of attention, definitely get this one. This will attract plenty of attention. Um, perhaps not the kind of attention you want, but yeah, if you want that, get this one. This is definitely right up your alley. Anyway, here's the uh, flight footage for you. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.